Hello and welcome to Modern Infrastructure Wednesday at Pulumi TV. My name is David Flanagan, though you may know me from across the internet as Raw Code. Today I want to follow on from my awesome colleague Laura, who introduced you to the concept of infrastructure drift in the latest Quick Bite video. Not seen it? Click here. Now let's see how Pulumi can help us with drift by taking a look at a few examples. And let's use an example from everyone's favourite infrastructure book, The Three Little Pigs. Now, Polymer provides a flag, dash dash refresh, that allows for the state of the world to be refreshed before building a plan for what Polymer needs to change. Without the refresh, Polymer relies on its existing snapshot of the world and really only updates things when the Polymer program changes. The challenge here is well covered by Laura but I'll quickly recap. If there are no external factors that can modify the state of your Pulumi created resources, then you don't need refresh. Of course, if you think this is actually true, I'm either extremely jealous of your setup and infrastructure, or you're plain face lying to yourself. Either way, reach out, I'd love to chat with you. If external factors are a concern, such as click happy engineers in cloud portals, kube control, malicious actors, or even cosmic rays. Then you'll likely want to ensure that your Pulumi program refreshes the state of the world with a cadence that makes sense for you. Now let's get back to our three little pigs. First, we have the House of Straw. This is your first step into reconciling drift and your infrastructure. And that's just manually running Pulumi up dash dash refresh. This is definitely the easiest way to get started and depending on the wolves in your domain could be a perfectly valid solution. If you're a solo developer working on a side project, done. Forgotten your AWS credentials and can't actually log into the portal and only have an API token left locally? Sure. So let's take a look at Plumi up dash dash refresh. Here we have a Plumi TypeScript program that creates a DigitalOcean Spaces bucket, as well as a DigitalOcean Spaces bucket object. If we jump over to the command line and run Pulumi up, it will create both of these new resources. Awesome. If we run Pulumi up again, it will tell us there's no change. Now, if we move over to the Spaces UI, Refresh the page, we'll see we have our new space. Inside the space, we have our object. Now, as a random team member making a little bit of a mistake, we're going to delete this item. And if we come back to Pulumi and say, hey, run a Pulumi up, it says, hey, we're good, man. And that's not the case. Now, we can add dash dash refresh to the command to have Pulumi look out to DigitalOcean and make sure that what we want is there. And if it isn't, reconcile. So we run the Pulumi up refresh. It tells us, hey, we actually need to recreate this object. We say, all right, go for it. And it's done. We come back to our Spaces UI. We hit refresh. Good as new. Okay, next up, the House of Sticks. You're probably no longer a solo developer and there are other people or other teams involved. Running Pulumi up dash dash refresh on your machine isn't going to cut it anymore because others can commit to your repository. And you need confidence that they won't forget to update the stack. And this is where we lay it in continuous integration using Jenkins, GitHub Actions, CircleCI, or your build tool of choice. Using workflows embedded in the repository, you can ensure that whenever the code changes, your stack changes. Perfect. Let's take a look at this. So for integrating Pulumi into your continuous integration system, I'm actually going to lean on real world example that I use in my own infrastructure. What we have here is my rockwood-rockwood repository on github.com. And I have a Pulumi project called Infrastructure, which has its own GitHub Actions workflow, 
just available in .github slash workflows slash infrastructure .yaml. Now, what you can see here is that we actually run this on a daily cadence where it's a con scheduler that runs at six minutes past six every single day. Not only that, we run it whenever code is pushed to the repository that affects the main branch and my infrastructure code. So we have two different ways to do continuous reconciliation through GitHub Actions. And we're using the Polymy Action, which is really, really <laughs> a breeze and easy to use. We say use Polymy Actions version three. We want to run a Polymy up. We provide the stack name, production, or whatever you need it to be. And we include a refresh to ensure that we're refreshing the state of the world every time we run this Polymy up looking for that infrastructure drift. And uh, we have the Pulumi access token. And that's all it really takes. You can integrate Pulumi via GitHub Actions using the action and just a few lines of YAML. We also have a CircleCI orb. So even if you're not using GitHub Actions and you're using CircleCI, then you can go to Pulumi slash CircleCI on GitHub and you'll see the instructions to do something very similar using the orb. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using CircleCI, GitHub Actions, Jenkins, or anything else. There's always a way to pull Pulumi in and run it to reconcile Drift on a change of your Pulumi program. All right, finally, a house of bricks. Now things are getting pretty serious. We really need to protect from many of the external factors listed previously. So we need a better system than waiting for a push to main. We need real-time reconciliation. And I'm going to show you how I would do this with our Kubernetes operator. But fear not, if you're not using Kubernetes, I will discuss some alternatives after. So let's take a look at the operator approach. The first thing I'm doing is storing the stack state inside the cluster, just using a directory within the pod. So I'm just setting up the stack secret as a Kubernetes secret. Next, we have to define the stack itself. So here I'm calling this my production stack. And uh, I'm passing in our secret as the state passphrase. Next, I'm telling it to use the drift stack with a file backend, and I'm pointing it to my project repository. So this is my infrastructure as code on github.com at raw code slash pulumi dash operator dash digitalocean. This is the exact same code that deploys the digitalocean space with the digitalocean space object. Here, I'm telling it that if the stack is created within the Kubernetes API to delete those resources. We also need to enable continue resync on commit match. What this means is that we set up a resync frequency of one minute. And if there have been no changes to the Git repository, we still want to tell it to resync. And that's all that's saying. When the commit matches, yep, still check things. We also pass in a refresh.true. This is very similar to what we were doing on the command line, only now we have a control loop within another system that will run on a 60 second interval to ensure that the state of the world and what we want is reconciled appropriately. And if we jump over to DigitalOcean, you'll see that we have our space here. And all I'm going to do is delete our object like we did with the previous demo. And then now at some point within the next minute, this will be recreated. And this could either be the longest minute or the shortest minute of my life. All right, we'll just wait 30 seconds before I go refreshing again. Has that been 30 seconds? All right, so without me touching any dials, knobs, command lines, anything, our control loop within our Kubernetes cluster, the Kubernetes Pulumi operator, detected that our file was missing and reconciled it, giving us exactly what we need. All right, so that was Kubernetes. There are many sturdy materials to build a house besides brick, such as concrete, timber, stone, or even iron. What it comes down to is that it really depends on the external pressures our house needs to stand up to. Perhaps Kubernetes isn't the right approach for you. So what are your options? Well, there's our automation API. 
you could ship your Pulumi program as a binary that has a built-in reconciliation loop. This control loop could be tailored to your environment by running in an infinite loop with a sleep for 5, 30, or even 600 seconds before checking and refreshing the world. But it could also be smarter than that. It could run as a blocking network server that receives real-time events from your AWS audit log, filters and matches for managed resources or types, and then performs a stack update. When you understand your constraints, you can control a reconciliation, and our automation API is the perfect tool for that. We'll be covering more examples of the automation API in this context in future modern infrastructure videos. I'll include a link below when it's available. Well, that's that. I hope you found this useful. Let us know by clicking the like button, leave a comment, and maybe even subscribing to our channel. We want to help you be successful with Pulumi, and we hope you found this video useful. See you all next time.